I had time to research, you know. Basically, I put this together because when I found out about this stuff a few months ago, I said, man, I want all my friends to get out of here, so i got to have a reason. i got to I put all this stuff in one place to be able to show them so that I don't look like an idiot or some kind of freak, you know. So uh, basically, I, I put all this stuff in place. Um, they've recently been finding there. Now, remember I told you that the sea levels were five, almost 500 feet lower. Well, they're now starting to find these cities. This is off the coast of Japan. The last time that this place was above water was 10, 8 to 12,000 years ago. And yet they have these big advanced uh, creations. Um, now if you go down here you'll notice that Cleopatra's palace also found underwater. Okay? And also they just recently found two huge 10 miles square. I can only include one in here because I made this back before they found a second one, but they found two huge cities 10 miles square right next to each other off the coast under, it, under the, the ocean near India. So here they got these cities that they found underneath the water. And uh, so there's that. Um, ancient star matches, the Great Pyramids. 10,500 years ago, they matched up with the constellation of Orion perfectly. Exactly 10,500 years ago, the Sphinx looked to the to the east rising sun on the spring equinox. 10,500 years ago, in Angkor Wat, these two pillars here would line up to the, to the spring and winter solstices. Uh, this is uh, Angkor Wat also. You see their fascination with serpents, the giant serpent. Okay, you see how they're holding the serpent. Also you see here in this one, they're holding the serpent but you can see it's broken free. And what are they doing? They're standing on a turtle. They're telling you to run and hide. That's a symbol of, of hiding. Angkor Wat also lined up with the constellation Draco 10,500 years ago. Tiwanaku, one of the most amazing cities ever. These things are built so, this has been around for so long, and yet look at this, no mortar whatsoever. This, this structure has stood without any mortar. Mm -hmm. These things right here, or not those, but this one and and another one over here lined up to this uh, winter and summer so or spring so uh, equinox here they are lined up to the to the equinoxes 10,500 years ago. <coughs> Excuse me. So what's interesting is if you map all these things out across the globe, you'll find that most of these uh, artifacts that lined up to the sun and and the moon and that, or the equinoxes form a perfect circle. Okay, here's Easter Island right here. Okay, so basically. Somebody, ages ago, was trying to tell us something by making a big giant circle around the world. Um, so there's all the ancient star matches. Uh, let's see here. We've already kind of gone over the petroglyphs. Now, in this, uh, in this thing, there's also a couple of documentaries, like this thing called The Great Year. This is, a, I think it's an hour-long documentary you can watch. Um, the Great City of Atlantis. Okay, Plato... Atlantis was a naval power lying in front of the pillars of Hercules that conquered many parts of Western Europe and Africa 9,000 years before the time of Solomon and <coughs> approximately 9,600 BC. After a failed attempt to invade Athens, Atlantis sank into the ocean on a single day of night misfortune. Well, what is America doing right now? We're trying to take over the world's resources right before the event happens because we want to have our hands on all the world's resources. Most likely, the same thing was happening during Atlantis at the time. That's why they were at war with half the world, because they were trying to steal all the world's natural resources. Um, so you got Atlantis. Uh, let's see here. All right. Now, there's some old writings that are similar to the Bible, but they're not the Bible. Um, this is out of the, it's called the Colburn Bible. And these are ancient writings from, from Egypt. <coughs> it is in fact known to the wise that the earth was utterly destroyed once and reborn on the second wheel of creation. A lot of people don't know that, that Egypt had a 360 day calendar. <coughs> and then all of a sudden something happened, a great catastrophe, and all of a sudden the days went to 365. So the Egyptians had to change their whole calendar system. And what they did is they still went by their normal 360 days, but they designated those five days as days of the dead, where they mourned their dead friends and family. Okay? Four times have the stars moved to new positions, and twice the sun has changed its direction as its journey. Twice the destroyer has struck Earth. Uh, God caused a dragon from out of heaven to come and accomplish about the seas were loosened from the cradles and rose up pouring across the land. Uh, let's 
So let's go down here. Uh, men should know that the earth will be afflicted. The sign was a strange star. The star grew <coughs> and waxed in great brightness and was awesome to behold. It put forth <laughs> horns and sang, yeah. being like any other ever seen. So. Um, when ages pass, certain laws operate upon the stars in the heavens. Their ways change and their movement and restlessness so are no longer constant. And the great light appears readily in the skies. Um, they will hear the trumpet and the battle cry of the destroyer. <laughs> they will be eaten up by the flames of wrath and consumed by the breath of the destroyer. Um, <coughs> let's see okay, this is the interesting one. It twisted about itself like a coil. Okay, it was not a great comet or a lucent star, being more like a fiery body of flame. Yes. What did we just see with the Norway spiral? A giant coil with a fiery body of flame. Can you go, go, go back up a little bit? Sure. We talked about they will seek refuge inside the earth. Oh. They're, bu they're building these big cities in oh, yeah. the United States. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see here. That's really, that's really interesting. Right uh, at the top. At the top. No, uh, well, where are you? The top of where you are. <laughs> where you are. Right, 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 yeah. There, yeah. Three point six. Keep, keep, keep going down. <coughs> I like the part where it says women will be as men and men will be as women. <laughs> well, that's pretty. Um, pretty oh, yeah. Right here, we'll see. Yeah. So, uh, these are ancient writings from the Colburn Bible. How do you spell that? K O L B R I N. Um, the days of the years were shortened, and the times of all things altered. The seasons were turned around. Okay, so there's some ancient Egyptian writings about that are pretty clear. Now, um, Easter Island. What, the, what, what they try and tell you is that a group of people decided to take a boat, almost it's actually almost 3,000 miles out in the middle of nowhere, build a bunch of monuments, and then say, oh, well, we're done. I mean, come on now. Look at these guys. They're all looking up to the sky. <laughs> Why are they looking up to the sky? Sun okay, they're all looking up to the sky because that's why they put the, that's why they picked Easter Island because it was in that little circle that they put around the around the world to try and show us that they had advanced technology back then. Um, oh, let's see here. This Sorry, one, thing one second, real quick. What if that circle is just because of an observation point? Like they would have they would have the same observation point of the <laughs> celestials, like constellations and stuff. Right, that, that's what I'm saying. I'm just putting out facts. I mean, if you want to, you know, you want to okay. figure it out and however you want to. We want the freaky truth. <laughs> <laughs> I just Tell stick us. with the facts because if I don't, then people say, that's your conjecture. So I just stick with the with what I know is the truth. Um, this is really interesting stuff. Um, the, uh, here, we'll play this little thing here. On August 19th, 1977, the American space probe Voyager 2 leaves Cape Canaveral on a several-year journey to the vicinity of this solar system's most distant planets. The Voyager's discoveries challenge many of astronomy's recent conclusions, while fully corroborating ancient knowledge. For the first time, we see images of Uranus. Astonishing, it is exactly as the Sumerians report in their 6,000-year-old description. Though they have no telescopes that we know of, the Sumerians characterize Uranus as Mash Seek, translated bright greenish. They also explain the unique planetary tilt of Uranus. According to the Sumerians, our solar system was invaded by a planetary body that caused collisions and disrupted the existing order. NASA scientists concur that a collision with a body the size of Earth traveling at 40,000 miles per hour could have caused both the orbital skew of Uranus and the devastation apparent from the planet's surface scar. Its neighbor Neptune was described as a blue-green planet by the Sumerians millennia ago, but science has only confirmed this fact during the past few decades. The Sumerians named and listed all of the planets in our solar system. Their documented list of these planets is tangible evidence that in at least one respect Modern man is on a path of rediscovery. Dead ancient knowledge included the planets Uranus and Neptune, supposedly unknown until <coughs> discovered in 1781 and 1846, and even Pluto, not discovered until 1930. Neptune, new to the Artful Creator. 
Alright, you have to watch the rest of this later. I'm running kind of short on time, so I'm going to kind of whip through this. Uh, but basically,